afternoon, everyone. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, any testimonies in the house? God doing something, has done something. Anybody? Yes, please. Testimony? Yes. Good. That's good. Let's, let's listen to testimony.
So thank God for that. And yeah, if you if you start, the, the, the blessings are there. As the pastor was saying before, the blessings are there. We just have to go get them, take them, because we are the children of God. That's our right. So if when we say with our mouth that we believe it, that we're going to have it even though we don't see it, we will have it. He will, he will do it in every way. Health, finances, you just say it, believe in God, Jesus is going to do it, and, and it will happen. It, ha it happened to me, so thank God it's going to happen. Amen. Amen. This is enough for a service this evening, right? Because God has touched, you know, the testimonies has touched every part of our lives. Finances, health. Yeah, a couple of things God did for us that night. When the baby came out, the, the, the nurse and the doctor, they said something, they were like, did you see that? And he said, no, this is what is it? What's wrong? They said, well, the umbilical cord was tied in a knot. And we said, well, they said, just thank God that he's here. He's, he's alive, he's alive, it could have been worse. So I thank God for that. Praise God. Hallelujah. There is a song in my country that used to say, I have a God who never fails. I have a God who never fails. I have a God. Verse 46 says, 
And so the rich Jericho, <clears throat> later as Jesus and his disciples left town, the great crowd was following. A blind beggar named Bethemaus, son of Themaus, was sitting beside the road as Jesus was going by. When Bethemaus heard that Jesus from Nazareth was nearby, he began to shout out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He said, be quiet. Some of the people yelled at him. But he only shouted louder, Son of David, have mercy on me. When Jesus heard him, he stopped and said, Tell him to come here. So they called the blind man, Cheer up, they said. Come on, he is calling you. Then the mouse threw aside his coat, jumped up, and came to Jesus. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus asked. Teacher, the blind man said, I want to see. And Jesus said to him, Go your way, your faith has healed you. And instantly the blind man could see. Then he followed Jesus down the road. You see, faith is the most important topic in life. And it's the most important topic in the scriptures. Faith. A teaching of faith is the most important. The Bible says without faith, you cannot even believe God. So, it doesn't matter what else you know, if you don't please God, it's like amounts of nothing. Am I correct? doesn't matter how much you can do. If God is not pleased with what you do, it means nothing. The Bible says, let those who are brag that they have knowledge, brag in the fact that they know God. And for you to know God, you need faith. Am I correct? We all need faith to know God. You know, God cannot be studied in schools. But what he has done is he chooses to reveal himself to us in bits and pieces. Bit by bit. He reveals himself. So God gives us access to himself through what we call revelation. It doesn't matter how long you've been in church, how long you preach, whatever your, your vocation is, whatever your background is, your knowledge of religion is different from your knowledge of God. We know about Buddha. We know about Muhammad. We know about Hinduism. We know about all kinds of religions. You can study them, but you cannot study God. What book are you going to read? Who will teach? Who is a lecturer to teach you about God? That is the only reason why God said, if you're going to know me, I have to teach you, I have to reveal you to me. And the way I'm going to do it is, I'm going to reveal to you through my spirit, and a relationship with my spirit, with me, is what you need, and that is built on faith. Without faith, you're not going to heaven. Without faith, there's no resurrection. Without faith, Jesus couldn't do nothing. He used faith to do every miracle he performed. So faith is the most crucial thing in the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Sometimes I feel tempted to carry on with things that I feel I know. But the thing is, filling our hearts and our minds with just information. Information is good, by the way. You know, information is very good. But the thing that will get us closer or can connected to the heart of God, as far as I'm concerned, that is what I... Money is the currency, sorry, time is the currency that we cannot afford to waste. Amen? And every opportunity I have to share the word of God, I see it as a golden opportunity that I do not want to misfire or waste. So I try to target how we can use that opportunity to draw our hearts closer to God. And to be in the center of God's will, and that is by faith. Praise God. Praise God. The Bible says everything is by faith. Heaven you are going to is by faith. Your salvation is by faith. The miracles we just tes testified about today and heard about, they all come by faith. So faith is the most important thing 
in our relationship with God. How many of us have seen God physically? How many of us have ever been to heaven but you believe is, heaven is there? How many of us see the Holy Spirit physically? You can see with the eyes of faith, but it's not with the physical eyes. Unless God chooses to reveal himself to you in a supernatural way. Amen? Come on, amen? amen. Now, I want to tell you this, you know, remind you of this story of this blind man called Bartimaeus in the Aramaic, Bar means son. So he's a blind son of Timaeus, if you know what I mean. He happened to be set on the roadside always to beg. So this was not the only day he was out there, the first time he was out there begging. But let me just give us a, a little backdrop from a few things that I have learned in, from this man's life. And I'm going to speak from my heart. That's why I didn't do a bulletin today. I just want the Holy Spirit to be in charge today. Amen. You see, in their culture, for them to be able to beg, you have to get permit. And then they give you, they allow you to wear an outer coat. An outer coat. Big outer coat. You know, you know, like we call winter jacket or something, but in their style according to their fashion, you know, those days. And this outer coat would be, it makes you legal to stand where you were to bed, number one. Number two, it was your house. It was your covering at night. It was everything that he had. Bible says he stood there by the roadside on a certain day when Jesus was passing from Jericho, out of Jericho. And then what about the backdrop of Jericho? Remember in the book of Joshua, when the children of Israel went and they went to, they were journeying from Israel to the promised land, they went through Jericho. And remember it was Jericho that they marched around several times and they blew the trumpet and the presence of God came down and Jericho wall collapsed. And Jericho wall that collapsed was not the kind of wall that we build here. Historians said that the wall of Jericho, you could put chariots, six chariots side by side to run on top of it, side by side. So it could take two or three trailers. You know what I'm saying? And now for Jericho, to buttress that, you see that the harlot, the harlot, I've forgotten his name now, Rahab, right? Is it Rahab the harlot? Built his house on the wall. Remember? His house was encased in the wall. So for somebody to raise a family in a wall or to have, to have a home in the wall, the wall must be pretty thick, thick, if you know what I mean. So Jericho, after God brought it down, as they were going, Joshua made a comment. He said, whoever shall rebuild this wall shall lose his first son the day the foundation is laid. And when the, 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 the conclusion of the building was done, the last son must die. It's a curse upon the city. So Jesus was coming out of that place and this man was sitting by the roadside. The commotion roused his interest and then he said, what is all the noise about? He said, oh, it's Jesus of Nazareth that is passing by. And then they say to, he said, he didn't wait for anybody to invite him. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And they told him, hush, hush. You know, shh. Jesus, you know, you know who you're calling? You know how busy he is? This guy, you think too much of yourself. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't listen to the discouragement. He didn't listen to those who told him to hush. He screamed louder. Son of David, have mercy on me. He must have heard of Jesus before that day. So there was some faith in his heart. And there was the understanding that this man could help him. So he screamed louder. And suddenly the Bible says, and Jesus stopped. As Jesus stopped, Jesus said to him, call, he said, tell him to come. Tell him to come. Every process, everything, every process God gets involved with you on, he operates by nothing other than faith. Faith. He created the world by faith. He sent Jesus out by faith. 
Bible says, when there was nothing, God spoke what he saw in his heart. He spoke words. He said, let there be. So now it was a day to turn someone's life around, and God pulled the button of faith again. He said, tell him to come. Now, I just want to make it very brief. Bible says, as soon as he said, come, this man, the, 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 can, can, I, can, I, can I say something here? People that stand against you when you are struggling to rise up, they are going to rise up to sing your praise later. Amen? Come on, amen? Anybody who stands against you today, when you stand up, when your day comes, they are going to line up with you. The same people who say to him, hush! You know how busy this man is? These same people were the ones that said, oh, get up! He's, there, he's now calling you. See how people change like politicians? Praise God. Those who said, hush, are the same people who said, now he's calling you. And as soon as they said he is calling you, he got up. And the Bible says, he took his outer coat, folded it, threw it aside, and ran. Let's just take a look at that instance. Because when we look at it like that, it seems like he just removed his jacket and ran away. No. There was more to that jacket than meets, the, than meets the eye. Now remember, he was going, he was leaving the comfort zone, the place he has always been used to, for the unknown. Doubts and questions might rise in his mind saying, you are going to Jesus. What if you don't get here? What happens? And you are throwing away your jacket. This jacket makes you legal here. This jacket is the thing that keeps you from the cold at night. This jacket is all that you have. You are throwing it away without first holding on to what you are looking for. You know when the saying that a, a bird at hand is worth two in the bush? Is that not what we say? A bird at hand is worth two in the bush? Not when the bird is in God's bush. If the bird is in God's bush, the bird in God's bush is what all the birds elsewhere. In other words, what I'm trying to say is, when it has to do with God, a bird at hand is, is not worth much more than the bird in the bush. Amen? amen. Come on, amen. amen? The Bible says this man took his jacket, threw it aside, and ran out to meet Jesus. Bible, one translation that I read said, and he ran. And he ran. A blind man running. A blind man running. Can you imagine a blind man running? A blind man running. Three things that came to my mind as soon as, as soon as I was, I looked at that scripture. Number one, he initiated the call. If he had not called on Jesus, and if he had not persisted, Jesus would have passed it by. The, the, the crate of miracle, the day would have set, the sun would have set like every other normal day. But he decided and said, if that is Jesus that I have heard of, then today is my day. Praise God. Hallelujah. If that is the Jesus that I have heard of that raised the dead, then, and he's passing so close to me, I'm not going to let him pass me by. If it's the same Jesus that turned water into wine, that restored other people's blind eyes, that healed the lepers that we've been hearing about, then today is my day. He made up his mind. And God did not tell him, no, today is not your day. So in other words, let me say something here. If you choose to move forward, the day you decide to change your situation, God endorses it. That's what he tells you. Amen? Amen? When you make up your mind, God supports you. When you make up your mind, God supports you. When you make up your mind, God supports you. You know how we used to say, well, I'm waiting to see, could this be the, the right day? Could this be the right time? Is this the will of God? Is this not the what if I? And what if it didn't work out? What if? What will people say? What happens to my this? What happens to my that? No, the day he saw that this is the time, it was 
The day that God said, go ahead, if that is the day you want it. Another occasion that I will never forget was the woman with the issue of blood. Bible says as soon as she said to herself in her, in her heart, I'm going to go over to this Jesus and I'm going to get my miracle today. And when she went to Jesus by faith, she made up her mind. That is Mark chapter 5. She made up her mind. This was not, it had nothing to do with God saying, speaking to him in a dream or showing him a vision before he knew it was time. They made up their minds. And as they made up their minds, God did not deny them. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I'm speaking to myself too. When I make up my mind, God will not say, hold on a little bit. It's not your time yet. When they made up their mind, they stayed persistent. This blind man, when they took all the conditions, the situations, the circumstances around him, told him to keep quiet. Still remain where you are. It's not your day. Your day might come in the by and by. He said, no. Today is my day. <laughs> Come on. The woman with the issue of blood too in Mark chapter 5. The Bible says, I'm getting excited. The Bible says that when he, she went, number one, we didn't read it, but you can read it at home. Mark chapter 5. According to the tradition, a woman going through her menstrual circle, cycle does not go into the public. That's according to her tradition. So she broke the first rule. Number two, it, this was not just a normal monthly cycle. It was an infection that had no cure. So that made him ceremonially unclean. So she couldn't go into the public. She couldn't touch anything. Anything she touches or anyone she touches, that person or that thing becomes unclean. Yet she left her home and she decided to keep all the traditions aside and on the arguments aside, and she pressed, Bible says, and she went, and there was a large crowd, but she pressed through the crowd, aiming for Jesus. When she touched Jesus, Jesus did not say, you made me unclean, you just defiled me. No. She went with faith. She got what she wanted. This man cried for God, and God gave him his attention. When you and I stand up and we persist, God gives, we make, the way will be made for us. Amen. 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 When God said, come, when Jesus said, tell him to come, that was another level of faith, expression of faith. You really want to get this? You have got to take this step. You really want to get this? Take this step. You really want to get this? Take this step. You really want to get this? You really want to get this? My sister said she expected, she knew that God said she, she could do better. So she started to pay her tithe ahead, expecting that the amount I'm paying is the amount I want as an increase on my income. Amen. And God did, come on, yeah. hallelujah. hallelujah. If you want it, take the step. That's what God is saying to you and I today. If you want it, come. The Bible says, the man removed, he threw away what he was used to, so as to go for what he wasn't, what wasn't even in his hand yet. Paul said to, uh, as he was speaking, he said, I have not yet arrived at where I'm going, but one thing is, I'm not where I used to be. I've decided to leave the things that are behind me. And now I'm pressing toward the mark of God's high calling. I have left the back one. I'm reaching for the one in front of me. Another preacher put it much in, a, in a way that is good. He said, I haven't arrived, but I've left. And that is the state of my mind today. I haven't arrived, but I have left. And God is saying, you may...